Here we go. Let's do that. And ready, go. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nate Elmore, and you are listening to Vroom Vroom Veer with Jeff Smith. Thanks, bro. All yeah, right. no problem. Stop. Are you ready to thoughtfully steer away from your revved up, frenzied, and far too often scripted life? Then welcome to Vroom Vroom Veer with Jeff Smith, where he guides you down the road differently traveled by sharing unique experiences with guests who have managed to shift away from a life stuck on cruise control and veered their way into a more authentic and fulfilling one in all sorts of interesting and kind of remarkable ways. Get ready to Vroom Vroom Veer with your differently traveled road chauffeur, Jeff Smith. Rose, thank you so much for being on Vroom Vroom Veer and welcome to the show. How's it going? I'm good. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, uh, I heard you on the Social Sidekick podcast with our mutual friend, Lori, and uh, yes. you were amazing. And I, I had too. to reach out to Lori because, yeah, when I heard her on somebody else's podcast, I was like, oh my God, I need to talk to you. Really? And, wow. Yeah. Okay. So she's she comes across as an introvert. Is that what it is? I think that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in the similar way to me, like I don't think we, we come across as necessarily shy, but right. we have that that whole energy balance thing going on. No, for sure. So before we get too deep into this convo, we have to talk about your stuff. So you are Cat Rose and your website is thecreativeintrovert.com. So tell us a little bit about what's going on over there and what you what you're doing. Yeah, well, it started just as a blog about the experiences that I was having um, with marketing. I mean, at the time I started it, I was still doing, I was making pet portraits, basically, as well as doing some freelance design, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I was really struggling with as much as I knew what to do in terms of, you know, oh, I need, no, I need to like tweet this many times a day and all of this <laughs> right. other marketing stuff. I was just finding it really hard, especially when somebody just asked me the simple question, like, what is it that you do? Right. And um, I found that networking events, anything that involved um, in-person kind of meetings that involved more than one person, I just was really struggling with. And I was noticing that a lot of other creatives also had this struggle. Um, and yeah, as, as soon as I kind of worked out what an introvert was and kind of started proclaiming that I had introversion as if it was like this lifelong illness. Um, it, <laughs> I started realizing that I was not alone. And um, it was through blogging and setting up a Facebook group, which ultimately came the League of Creative Introverts, this membership site, that I kind of started connecting um, and sharing what I'd learned about dealing with my introversion in this weird marketing space where you've, or you're you've got your work out there and you just need to be able to talk about it and um, just just managing it in a way that feels good to you and your personality types. Right. Um, yeah. You've so, actually so made me, you know, I've, when I listen to you and Lori chat about, especially the marketing things, mm -hmm. um, like I went to the first podcast movement in Dallas in 2014 and I had the same feeling that you guys got when you went to big marketing things, like yeah. just super drained. Now yeah. I had been to smaller, more like personal development -y kind of events. And in, in that space, I was like very extroverty, right? I was happy to be there and not shy and just loving the whole scenario. But when you get mm. into these, like, I don't even know, thousand plus sorts of situations where most people are there to spend 30 seconds to figure out whether or not they can make money from you. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like really like icky. I don't know. That I need a new strategy for if I want to go to one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is it. And I think more and more people are kind of seeing through that and they yeah. don't want the same old thing and they're starting yeah. to see patterns and just it's much basically I, I think we're all quite torn because you know we're given these strategies and we're like well if you just follow these steps then you will have success okay well, right. and I'm all for that but then then I get like halfway and I'm like oh this doesn't feel so good right is this you what I'm meant to be doing bit. yeah 
right and then you're thinking oh but if I don't do it the way they said it then like it will all be like it won't work um whereas right. I've started to experiment more and not necessarily discount all of these things like I'm getting really into uh Facebook live and okay. live video right purely because it was what was connecting me with other people like I was watching people and thinking huh I really get them I wonder if I tried that then people would get me mm. and it was hard but it I think it's well I wouldn't say like it's working like this crazy you right. know that's gangbusters but yeah, it doesn't yeah. make you feel sick <laughs> no, it doesn't. And, and even the, the struggle in itself of actually getting yeah. out there, it felt like, no, this is this feels like a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's scary, but mm -hmm. it's not icky. Right, yeah, right, right. And I think we, we should step out and, and see that there's a difference here between just thoroughly icky, which is something you definitely never want to do, versus... Yeah stretching yourself and feeling that that pain of growth which we mm. all need to do right <laughs> there's there's yeah. this, and you know but that's something that i've just learned by reading a book that uh, about uh doubling down on skills and then coming up with a deliberate practice sort of habit you know yeah yeah, yeah what book was that out of curiosity what's that oh what's the name uh, of the book yeah yeah uh it's called so good they can't ignore you <laughs> Uh, Cal Newport. Cal Newport. Oh, you've, you've heard of it. <laughs> well, I, I, I've got it on my bookshelf and I'm like, I meant to read that. But uh, uh, yes, yes. I, I love that. Read. Everything I've. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and everything I've heard about it, I think that really makes sense. It's like, um, what are your innate strengths that right. people kind of like see in you, but sometimes you can't even see them yourself. And right. um, it's those things that. I mean, yeah, it, it, even for me recently, I've um, got a coach who has pointed out some things that I was like, no, really? And he's like, right. no, really? No, really? <laughs> Which is really helpful. And that's it why is. It's another reason why I'm kind of encouraging people to sort of, you know, a coach, mentor, whatever it is, just a, a kind of <laughs> neutral friend. Because I think even our right. friends don't see it's this a, stuff. It's, a, it's a, a, a person that you hire to be uh, extra honest with you. Yes. About yes. you and your stuff, which used to be the domain of therapy. And that's way more mm -hmm. expensive than a coach. But here's the deal that I like about the Cal Newport book is it it sort of like reverses the um, let's see here. <clears throat> Find your passion and then you'll always be happy. It's sort of, you know, it that's great. If it works, but most mm. people just kind of get lost in saying, what's my passion? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like me, yeah. You know, instead of just going with what you're good at, which is much easier, you know, because, uh, you know, you've already got something that you're good at. Well, exactly. And I right. think this is a problem that I think creatives in particular, and I, I'm kind of talking about uh, creativity in general but specifically like Design, I see it a lot in stuff. the visual arts yeah mm -hmm. and you know we've grown up like loving drawing right. but and it's not that some of us aren't I, I'm talking about myself here <laughs> like sure. basically I, I, I was fine like I could draw some some stuff and whatever but could I turn that um into a business and like it was tough. And then I, because of how difficult that was, it kind of sucked the fun out of it. And right, I realized, right, oh, actually, right, this right, right. isn't, even though this is like a skill that I, I'm, I'm pretty good at um, and I do enjoy, maybe I don't want to make that into a business. And maybe my the way I serve people is in a completely different way. And getting honest with myself over that was, um, I guess that was like an ongoing thing. But it, yeah, it was definitely a process. Yeah, you know, and I've heard that one too before. It's like, <clears throat> it's it's I think have you ever heard of a guy named Derek Sivers? Uh I love him. Yeah. Yeah. He sent out uh uh you know one of his famously short emails. <laughs> and uh and and he pointed at first it was a blog post and then at the end it was oh by the way real Ca read this Cal Newport book. But his mm -hmm. idea was was find a thing, right, that you're really good at and make that your job. But don't make mm -hmm. it the thing that fills your soul. Just make it the thing that you, you know, don't necessarily hate, but just pays your bills, right? 
Yeah. And then and then keep the other thing as a hobby and don't make it make money. You know, and I thought, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's it almost like asking like one person to be everything to you, right? That's what if if you try to marry this passion with making money because at the end of the day you got to eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're going to do something, you know, to get money. You have to do. And you can draw as many of those like concentric circles as you want, but sometimes there isn't just this perfectly aligned thing at the center. Exactly. Sometimes we have to have like, I mean, I'm all for having like, you know, your eggs in a few baskets. Um, And it might be that some of them don't make any money and those are the passion projects, but don't call them a business. (laughs) Exactly. Um, Yeah, it's it's a hard truth. I think the internet kind of tries to sell us the view that, everything you know do what you love and everything will turn out yeah like rainbows it's this and unicorns. happy fantasy but, um, right <laughs> yeah and, <laughs> another thing i was recently um well i kind of was reminded i think uh it's covered a lot in that book the e-myth the e-myth oh rather. right the e-myth um, revisited yes that's the one and it's the idea that i think there was a woman who was like baking bread or something and she oh yeah she, she had a bakery but realized that she just wanted to bake the bread. She didn't want to own a business. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it could yeah. be the other way around. Right, right, right. It's, it's really interesting. I mean, I, I worked out a while ago that I was not cut out for an office job. And just working for anyone but myself becomes like it just this inner turmoil, like regardless mm. of the task at hand. Mm-hmm. Probably some psychological issues there I should <laughs> work on. But, you know, and I think whereas the idea of like yeah. – everything that comes with being an entrepreneur and like growing a business and kind of creating stuff from thin air that really appeals to me mm. uh, and, and it doesn't bother you to stay home all day and not oh, interact no. with people well, this is again it's another introvert thing like yeah. oh my god i'm in my like paradise in so my own little <laughs> tell us a story if you don't mind about how like the last time you worked in an office and 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 how 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 you felt icky <laughs> yeah yeah because so, that I would mean, be interesting I will to me caveat this by saying like there wasn't anything wrong this is i think this is the tricky thing because mm-hmm. it was clear that the other people in the office were having a fine time right. and as far as i knew maybe they were also having this in a well they're all pretending well, to a certain yeah. degree right uh, uh, but the thing is on paper i had this great design job and i was working in london and living my little dream at least that's what I'd been told was my dream. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I just found that, you know, from the get go, I would pretty much feel drained after the first couple of hours of the day. And, you know, I'd be like, okay, well, I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. But <laughs> the rest of the rest. afternoon, like I would just get like progressively more drained and basically inefficient. Um, mm. I was a pretty hard worker, but I just couldn't understand why I couldn't maintain that level of energy. Um, going home on the commute, you know, I would be so frustrated. I mean, there were times that I would just go home in tears. And for no particular reason, it was just like, I think, sheer exhaustion. And mm. I mean, come on, like just being in a, in a busy, don't know if you've been to London, but the underground in London is is pretty intense at rush right. hour. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think just all of that, um, and I didn't really want to complain because I was like, well, people do this like how am I not able to do this thing that everyone else can do um and, and I kind of just put boil it down to me being the spoiled youngest child <laughs> and, you know for, for a good few years I stuck it out but um finally for how I can't long even did you stuck, what, stick it out I think it was three years three years um, just okay. over three years yeah um and then I quit and um, I think my my offer was can I just go down to like three or four days a week I just can't do the five days mm-hmm. that wasn't doable um but I, so I, so I quit and I thought like, okay, I'll give myself six months to try freelancing. Okay. Um, and that worked out really well for me. I just loved having that kind of control of, over my time. Of course, it's definitely not something that I think everyone, um, you know, I wouldn't say they cut out for, cause I think anyone can do anything basically, but I would it's say whether that or not you do- feel good about you know, the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. And like the downsides to freelancing stuff, like just the whole uncertainty thing, mm. I can deal with that pretty well. Mm-hmm. In fact, I get bored very easily. So it suits me down to the ground. Whereas being in that office and having the same thing every day, 
um, and just, you know, it's like an open plan space as well. So all of this stuff. Um, There's no just, privacy. It's just right. Exactly. And the constant kind of distractions, I think, just wasn't helpful for me. I think right. another thing with introverts, like I think we, we really thrive when we are allowed to just focus on what, some, one thing. I think mm. most people do. But um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not um, the easiest. And it wasn't an easy decision either because the people I work with were lovely. Yeah. But um, no, yeah. I, I went through like essentially the opposite of your experience. So I must be an extrovert. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I spent like the last two, say like, say like from 2011 until about uh, the summer of last year, um, trying to stay home and do stuff online and make money. Mm. Uh, it never worked out. Nobody wanted to buy anything, right? But um, I never really wanted to sell anything either. <laughs> but the, the key here is the introvert extrovert thing. It was driving me nuts to not right. be around people. So it's like the opposite. So when I went and got a job in August, right? And I would go to the office from nine to five. And then just what I call that, I call that like herd exposure, you know, getting on the bus and then being downtown and being in an office. It was like a warm bath from, for my brain. I was like, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> It was like the exact opposite of what you just described. I didn't really yeah. give a shit about what happened. You know, I, I wasn't really even working. I was just there to be there in case somebody needed help. Now, eventually that gets boring. But for the first month, I was just happy mm. to be out of the house. Interesting. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I'm like, I just don't understand. No, but I, I, I get you. And I do think that... Um, one thing I have noticed is that if I'm just pretty much on my own for my limit is three days and I've experimented this when I've done solo travel, um, after about three days is when I really need like some proper, like in-depth human interaction. And that isn't just like going to a shop and ordering coffee, which, right. you know, it just gives you a little dose. Yeah. Yeah. You're, um, you're in the one, herd, right? There's exactly. probably not lions going to eat you. <laughs> um, totally abandoned yeah right yeah. right right okay. i think for freelancers who do have that problem um i mean it's something that i did this year but more for networking reasons um is joining a co-working space right um, right, right, right so just right. yeah taking your work to an office like that um for sure it's really helpful yeah no i i, I kind of figured that out while i was still in it Right. That yeah. I just had no idea how much better it would feel to get out and just have that nine to five was just now, like I said, it only lasted from August until January. So just this month I quit. Mm. But mm. that's because I'm moving to Las Vegas. So I want to go find a similar easy job in Vegas. Definitely um, going where the people are. <laughs> right, right. Oh, Vegas is great, but it'll be a total upgrade from where I, from like I'll get a better house for half the cost. No way. way. I would have thought Vegas is really expensive, but okay. California. I live in Los yeah. Angeles and it's just like Fair it's enough. like having two countries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just charge too much for everything. So Let's get into uh, a couple of your stories. So what were you like, say, like when you were younger? Were you, did you know you were an introvert? Right. So no, but I was told a lot that I was shy or quiet. I was always getting asked to smile. And, you know, there's this family portrait of I'm the youngest of four. And everyone in the portrait is looking directly at the camera, smiling, happy families. I'm just laughing because I, uh, my face, I can't look at the camera. The guy just would not, he couldn't get me to look at the camera okay. and he couldn't get me to smile. And I remember distinctly him telling me like, just think of something really happy. And I remember thinking, I must be smiling. I'm thinking about going to, uh, I think it was like Disney World or something. And just in my mind, I was like, yeah, I'm doing a really good job. But all the photos come out and I'm not smiling at any of them. I don't think I knew how to smile on command. Like, wow. It just was not me. Wow. Um, but then I think throughout 
maybe high school years, I realized that I could get friends. I still found it difficult in groups of people. And most of high school, you're, you're basically in groups unless right, 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 right. you're in. Yeah. yeah. And I was fine one on one. So I would form friendships with one person. Um, but it was through basically just comedy that I managed to make people like me and I just worked out that one by one I could knock people down <laughs> um, <laughs> oh that's it, good I, I like it, it. You, if you, I get them on my own then it's fine <laughs> um but yes yeah, you had group, to be like a comedic sniper whenever, like, yeah basically that was me um and wow I, I like that and that maybe that's my new forget the creative introvert I'm the comedic sniper yeah there you so go. then in at university or college uh that's when I think I just loosened up a bit and realized, okay, people seem to like me well enough. Like, this is fine. Um, right. And I was surrounded by a lot of extroverts who kind of, I, don't, I wouldn't say that that made me more extrovert. I, I didn't even know what an introvert and an extrovert was then. I right. just assumed I was more outgoing than I'd ever been. But that's when, um, so yes, skip through those work years where I didn't really again I didn't know what an introvert was I just thought I'm finding work really hard yeah. um and then when I, was, when I was freelancing and I was telling a friend about how I uh, really struggled at networking events that I was fine for the first hour or two but again this like ridiculous feeling of I need to leave now I have nothing else to say um I just really oh, want to be thing. home right now. yeah and it would just come over me like a really powerful wave and he was like, oh, you're an introvert. That's why. Um, and I was like, well, I'm not really shy, am I? And he was like, well, no, that's not it. It's a, it's an energy thing. And right. that's, yeah. So that was how I found out about that. But yeah, I, I do think shyness is just a whole different ball game. And I definitely was shy. But I do think that shyness um, is something, it's just a social thing that can be not easily overcome, but I think overcome. Um and I'm really fascinated by confidence. I mean, I kind of hate that word. I don't think it's properly used. But this um, self-belief or whatever you want to call it, um, charisma, I think that is something that is learnable and practicable. Mm. Um, whereas introversion, extroversion, it's thought that that is pretty much how our brains are wired. And as much as they mm. can shift maybe over the years, yeah. I think they're pretty much, it, it just describes how we actually use our brain. No, in. I think you're right. Uh, and I have a, another friend who is a, a guest and his name is Steve Pavlina. He's a blogger and yeah. you know, he freelances. And he talked about how he was like you. He was like really, really shy and had a stuttering problem and would like just was really, really afraid of speaking when he was like young. And he's still an introvert, but now he does workshops, you know, so there mm. is hope, right? I mean, you just have to have a strategy, you know, and I think the best the best description when you say it's an energy thing mm is um, there was an introvert giving a talk in a class. And she was like, to me, an introvert has to use a lot of energy to mm -hmm. be uh, extroverted. <laughs> Whereas an extrovert speaking in and communicating energizes them. It's yeah. like the opposite. So that's why I was confused when I went to podcast movement and I was just like overwhelmed and wanted to run and hide because <laughs> it felt like incredibly icky and i so i don't know maybe there's like a just something inherently uh different about that environment um where everybody's mm. marketing and stuff that even makes me just feel like whatever this is it's just too damn big yeah 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 it, it's it's really interesting and i think it's it's kind of it can be unpredictable um time in groups like I went on a like mastermindy retreat thing last year and I was with a group of people for a couple of days but I never felt um drained at any point and I thought oh I'm gonna need like a fair bit of alone time I really just didn't need it right um, it wasn't a, yeah it, it was it was interesting so I think um I think it does vary uh, a lot yeah be yeah. prepared to be surprised basically and I do think it <laughs> matters like who you're with and some people are just naturally um 
I find to be energizing. Um, and they usually, no, I can't, it, there isn't even a, a rule to that. It's like, no, it's, it, yeah, indescribable. I think, I think, yeah, I've been, I had gone to lots of personal development workshops, you know, mm. and those are usually in the neighborhood of like a hundred, maybe 200 people max. Um, and in that environment, I felt fine, you know, Yeah. Uh, occasionally bored, you know, occasionally interested, you know, because the, the just de depending on the mode of presentation. You know, if we were mm -hmm. like doing something movie and uh, interactive and exercise like, then I was engaged. But if, if we're just sitting there looking at a slideshow, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, See, so I get that, you know, because they're they're trying to appeal to many different kinds of people. And I think that's wise, because thinking about that in itself, like I start to like I, I always just want to leg it to the to the door but when somebody in a workshop asks us to do something that's interactive so you want to leave is, like, <laughs> yeah 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 like okay. i i kind of don't like those sure activities um i'm way more happy when somebody just like puts on a decent show and i can just sit back and pretend i'm not there so that is really interesting and i think that's um i, I think as events i'm seeing them becoming more of a like business model that people are kind of grasping onto. Um, it's just worth like thinking about that. Like how can you appeal to different audiences? Right. Um, for sure. Or like if, if, you know, there was a tailored workshop, you know, okay. Introverts only please. <laughs> how would that <laughs> right. look different? Right. It would um, look no, completely different. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because I would imagine like an introvert, I, well, I, again, I'm thoroughly just imagining, but anything that you guys like would probably bore the hell out of me. But like, you know, like give, it, give you an assignment, right? And maybe break you up in the little groups of three or four, right? Where you that can, sounds nice. Right, yeah. where you can go <laughs> and like, you know, work talk out politely. a thing, <laughs> talk politely amongst yourselves, work out a plan, and then the most extroverted of the bunch presents your results or something. That that might yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's interesting. What happens in groups of whether they're introverts or shy or quiet extroverts, it always there always happens to be one person right who sticks out as the um, the louder amongst them, and I right. think that would be an interesting experiment among like all introverts just to see how that plays out. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not like planning on running experiments in introverts. Don't worry guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's talk a little bit more about like how you figured out that you could, you could like help other introverts because that's got to be an interesting story. I don't know about interesting, but I, do you know that it, I <laughs> was not. I had been blogging anyway and I just okay. really enjoyed that medium um and I really do think that you kind of teach what you know and you're always going to be a step of head, ahead of someone um but really I think it came about just from me wanting to connect with other people going through the same thing right. and when we were all kind of like sharing problems um online and just saying like oh you know how how do you deal with networking or whatever it is I, I was like oh no I, I feel like I can handle this <laughs> and uh -huh. I guess that's that's how it happened I feel like the creative intro itself has been like super organic like I surprised I'm I'm here um <laughs> kind of in, in that position but also just realizing you, you know like if that if people are like emailing you and saying like oh this has helped me then that's super encouraging and no, I'm going to keep huge. doing that. Right. That's yeah. Huge. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so it really just, you know, I'd like to say I, I'm a total chronic planner, but this is not something that I'd really planned for, but it's but something that I'm the, I really loving. A, yeah. That's a good indication that, you know, if people are already asking questions, then you're only like a couple of ticks away from asking for money. You know, and that's, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a good test for whether or not you've got something that, you know, if they're going to give you money. <laughs> yeah. I think somebody, I th I was reading, um, Tim Ferriss's latest offering, um, tools of Titans and there oh, is right. a quote in it. That's it. like, Oh, um, 
you know, don't start a business unless somebody asks you to. Actually, in fact, that might have even have come from Derek Sivers, but I, I loved that. It's true. It's the idea that yeah. the crowd kind of gives you the permission. permission. Um, Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Because anything you think of is, pro- is, you know, hey, maybe people will give me money for this. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. And, and then they want to give you money for the thing that, oh, look at that. It's the thing that comes easy to you right. and that you don't even see as a as a thing. And that's, that's something true. that's also, yeah, I mean, circling back to what we were talking about before. But it's really interesting. And I think the more you know yourself, so dealing with like introverts and like what it really means to be an introvert and um how your like like little preferences can determine how you spend your day and how you spend your life and what work you do I think that's um key and I I can see how that could start playing out on a bigger scale you know what if all kids were able to be educated in in a way that um suited their preferences that would be really cool yeah because we have uh, the education is definitely like wants everybody to be an extrovert it's so messed up i mean again it it's, it's that it's completely <laughs> extrovert environment like 30 more kids in right. a room like no wonder i was quiet at school i was probably exhausted yeah, <laughs> so, yeah yeah you have zero energy you're zapped after hour one you're like get me out of here <laughs> <laughs> yeah so let's let's like do something completely different like money pythons and uh Talk a little bit about you traveling to Japan because, uh, Let. yeah, right. So See, that's how did that happen? Yeah. And that was the first thing I did after I quit my job. I was like, okay, book in flights to Japan because it was a time that I, I knew I would have this extended time to, to travel. And, um, it was the one place that ever since I watched Pokemon as a kid, I was like, <laughs> I must go to Japan. Right. Um, and so I spent a few weeks out there and really did have um, the best time. You know, it really, it it feels like a, a country that really, I don't know, aligns with me. Um, and I, I feel like, I think the quiet politeness of mm, Japanese people in right. general, like that, you know, I went home and I was still like kind of bowing and saying arigato to everyone right. like i, I do that too that. yeah yeah it's yeah. so nice it is um, it's pretty amazing yeah and just like the weirdness of it all like i, I love the little characters everywhere and um you know, did we're you get a before. chance to watch any uh tv um, like in the hotel rooms i or did anything? okay so one of my favorite things was the um the morning exercises right oh, those are hilarious that's so cool <laughs> but like why isn't that a thing i i was like i would do it in my hotel room just like in hysterics and then right. um yeah and i think i managed to catch some like crazy cartoons uh, mostly probably- what 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 uh makes me laugh is the how much they're enamored with kawaii right oh yeah yeah yeah, on all the commercials and all the ads, it's like, and it's not just like young girls. It's like everyone is saying that everything is like super cute. And- it's like not. I don't think dudes can get away with the kawaii. Do you not? Okay, maybe well, maybe not. not. I don't know. Maybe they do. I guess because I think the dude version of kawaii is a little bit more just dorky, right? I don't. I don't yeah. know. But like. I, I saw this one commercial. Um, I think it must have been for, I don't even know what the hell they were selling, but this mom and daughter were sipping this tea. And then at the very end, they would like do this heavy sigh and then go, they would both go, <laughs> <"Kawaii."> <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, oh, yeah, it's just hilarious how much. And oh, and- for everybody that doesn't know what kawaii means, it just means cute. Sorry. <laughs> and the other thing is um, how much like food programs there were. Oh, right. Is that, like that's a big thing. Like I, definitely like the food porn thing. It seems to be. Food porn like, is huge yeah. over there. Yes. Um, right. But, but yeah, it, it all just really um, fascinated me and I could definitely spend a lot more time out there. Yeah. So did you spend a lot of time on the bullet train, the Shinkansen? Um, we did because we. Uh, you I got the rail in- pass. I know that. Tokyo, yeah, and I started in Tokyo. Spent most of my time there. Really fell in love with Tokyo. Um, but we did get. The, I think we got the Shinkansen to Kyoto. Nice. Um, that's a long ride, long really. There. Yeah, and I think that's why we 
did the bullet train then we were like okay we'll get our like our money's worth if we do the right journey. <laughs> we go the whole um, way right that was really cool um and yeah i don't know gosh it's, it's just putting the english train system to sh- i think the world train system to shame but it is like living um, in the future it's amazing right yeah and just like sitting down with like a bento box on this like look and, and the seats like i didn't know that the seats were going to be like super luxurious as well right it's yeah, like being you know, on an the, airplane on the ground, but yeah, a fancy class. version, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Did you figure out that you could uh, you could book in and get a re- reserved seat for free with your rail pass? Yeah, I think we were encouraged because I was with um, for some of it. I was with a tour group, so oh, we were perfect. Kind of, like, told yeah. that little things like that. Yeah. But I remember when I was on my own, being like, "Okay, I'm so glad I did that tour because I would not have understood." The, trains and like where you're meant to stand right Um, even though like when you know it it makes sense right like because everything in japan i felt was actually logical once you understood it like a mac um computer (laughs) but um (laughs) yeah it's at first it's it's quite baffling especially when you know there are a lot of characters and very little english and right well thankfully see now i basically when i go there i i can just turn my brain off it's it's good and bad. It's good yeah. because I'm basically just resting my brain and and I have the responsibilities of a three year old. But my <laughs> wife used to work for JTB. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I just you know kind of hang around and say yes, I'd like some juice. You know. Oh, awesome. Like that. <laughs> right. That must be surreal. That's so cool. It's so fun. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I so, have to carry the luggage, you know, but other than that, <laughs> I, I don't have to think about where we're going. I just follow her. So where do you stay? Um, her parents live in a very small little village out in the boonies. It's about, takes about three hours on the trains uh, mm. from Osaka. Okay. So we go from Osaka to Kyoto and then Kyoto to Abarahi Station out in yes. the middle of uh, Shigaken. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And it is, uh, it's like as rural as Japan gets. It's amazing. And it's freezing That's- in that house. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I would like to do is really do the stretch of it. I, I read a great book if years ago i can't remember the name of it but if i do i'll must let you know it's um a guy cycled i think i want to say no he can't have cycled no anyway he traveled from the very very south point to the very very north point um mm. of japan and mm. i just found that just fascinating because the climate changes so much and there is there are just so many uh different like these crazy little villages that is like Every you can't even believe it exists. Every village is just amazing. It's like being in a Studio Ghibli film. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That is one of the most fascinating little, uh, you know, snapshots, little Polaroids of life that I so much like cherish because yeah. there are like my my wife does this whole thing where she like plans out the whole you know, week for me. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it'll be train, 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 bus. And then we have to wait here at at these crossroads for like, you know, 30 minutes or so. And we are literally in the middle of nowhere waiting for a bus. You know, and I'm looking around, I'm like, okay, there's a seven 11. I could go to the bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and it's like laying everything out. Like there's, there's a stop. If it's raining, I could go sit over there. You know, and it's just, you always feel like it doesn't really matter where you are. You're always safe in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, uh, felt very safe. And, um, kind of like being in this dream world, like you said, some of the places I went to, especially when I was on my own, I remember going to a place that was quite remote. Um, and it just feeling like there was it was a ghost town but then you get to your destination and it just it's perfectly it comes normal to for life. them right. yeah <laughs> yeah and there's like an onsen and oh, mm, i love it's like onsen oh my amazing. goodness there was this one place so um when i was we lived there so we but we lived way up north in aomori ken okay. um and there's this base. It's an American base. Oh, it's a Japanese base, but it's mostly an American base. That's where I was stationed. Um, 
there around that area, there was this onsen, right? Mm -hmm. And it was called uh, Aoni, Aoni uh, Onsen. And its thing was there was no electricity. There was only Uh, all the lighting was gas lamps. Wow. And if they had any electricity, it was, you know, like generator. But for the most part, you had to like, you had to have a gas lamp with you if you wanted lights. Something that I I think in the UK or the United States, it would be banned because of fire hazard. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But there it's okay. And they, they sourced almost all of the food that you ate that night um, from that mountain. And the, oh, and, wow. the, and the cook would like give this long thing about each little thing that was on your, your own send plate. It was amazing. Uh, yeah. That, I love that experiences really feels, like that. Yeah. My, my worst, well, I wouldn't say this is a bad experience. At least it's a story, but I remember going, um, it was in like a, like a national trust kind of place. I was walking around, like exploring um, the kind of foresty area and on my map, it said that there was what I thought was a spot, like, yeah, an onsen was was around there. So I was like, okay, this would be cool. I've got my oh, swimming think... costume with me, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, not that that would matter. You don't really need one. Right. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I, so, and I found something that, you know, there was a little hut and there was what I thought was an onsen outside. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's open air as well. This is going to be amazing. Um, and the door was open. Well, I discovered the door was open because I didn't. I just walked in um, and it was a dude sat at a desk and I was just like, uh, crap, I don't know any Japanese. So all I said was onsen. And um, he was like, no, 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 home, home. <laughs> <laughs> I had walked into the poor guy's house. It totally wasn't the thing on my map. I don't know what I'd done. Um, he probably, it was through a swimming pool for all I knew. Wow. Um, but I had totally um, intruded into this Whoops. poor man's house. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, lesson learned. Did he look freaked um, out or was he happy to see he did, you? He, w- he looked freaked out, but I probably looked more freaked out. Yeah. Wow. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> At least he knew how to say no home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 completely. Well, um, that's, that's, I was, th- I was, I thought you were going to say it was going to be one of those open, open air, uh, si- uh, roadside ofudos because those do exist. What's that? Well, that's just, you know, it's like, it's like there's a, it's, it's not an onsen because an onsen is a little bit more built up hotel kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> around in Omori Ken, there would be like places where you could go and it would be like for camping, but then okay. uh, up the street and alongside the road, there would be like this thing that you don't have to pay for, right? And there's no real facility. There might, there at this one place, it, all it was was a men's changing room and a ladies changing room. And then, and then kind of like, you know, like a little locker room. So you could go in there mm. and take off your clothes and then, you know, leave your stuff there and then go jump in the bath. And there's no building. <laughs> There's okay. just a bath, right? So all they've done is they've made this sort of like uh, naturally concretey sort of bath, and then there's just this hose that's running up the side of up the mountain. Yeah, it was running up from the river, and that yeah. was where the the hot spring was, right? So there oh, was just this hose feeding this pool, making it hot, and people would bathe. <laughs> oh that's so yeah that's cool so that can I mean, actually think, happen yeah yeah maybe that's what i was looking for that's like maybe that was the thing for. that was marked on my map but w- right. whatever happened it was private property <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love um i just love their priorities like the the toilet seats um we were talking about earlier like right. these things are absolute thrones correct um where as the houses are not so heated <laughs> so right the switch up on priorities which um <laughs> it's always a fun experience for a westerner yeah um, occasion or however they say it yeah 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 no i i could i can share too because when i go home to visit my in-laws Every room in the house has its own space heater. So you, when you get into the room, then you turn on the heater and it warms up and you're fine. But mm. the hallways are freezing. Yeah. <laughs> the bathrooms are in the hallway. So 
I I really do appreciate the heated toilet seat, and the the toilet that I use doesn't have the heated toilet seat. It's kind of a terrible, bummer. and it doesn't even talk to you. Terrible. <laughs> I know. Well, thankfully, most of the nights we're out on the road, so we only spend you know like the bookends visiting with my uh, my in laws. So yeah, so usually like two three nights, and then a big long like three four night, and then two three nights, and then I'm I'm out of town. So not so bad, and you know. Got to live a little, right? Definitely. <laughs> Roughing it into her. I love it. Yeah. What else were we going to talk about? I, there was another thing about Japan that I wanted to talk about. Oh, the nonsense, right? Yes. So one of my favorite things is going to a supermarket. Right. I, I feel like they are museums. You know, I spend half my time just like picking up the weird things. <laughs> Okay. What could this be? Right, right. Is it a vegetable or what is this describing in this language? I don't understand. And you see, um, so the nonsense you were talking about, like the idea that uh, they have these like advertisings um, on vans, stuff like that. That's when I think I noticed it quite a lot. And I can't think of an example, but I think I took a lot of pictures, like half my photos were just really isn't japan weird (laughs) brilliant (laughs) but but very strange well Um, i guess they they have this cultural thing where they want to have english in their ads because then japanese people think whoa they spent a lot of money look there's english on these ads and they don't really care what it says yes they just look at it and go oh there's english on the ad and there's also japanese on the ad too that says what they need to know so yeah. they're using English as decoration. It's decorate. Yeah. In the same way that I guess a lot of. Right. We Kanji, probably have like a right. load of T-shirts. And, right. We have yeah. like Japanese and Chinese and they say silly things like toilet seat or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But over there when you can read it, then it's hilarious. That, Definitely. Yeah. Like uh, I remember I had a chair uh, and it said like this fashioned for your outdoor life or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just something. I love it. <laughs> just something. It's really charming a lot of the time. You're like, oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> it always sounds very naive, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's reminding me of the Simpsons episode. Have you ever seen the one when they go to Japan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that yeah. basically explains it all. That was all it, I needed to know. And I was like, yes. <laughs> it's so true. And yeah. and their version of slapstick comedy and uh, yeah 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 you have to go I mean now that now that I've talked to you about it I want to go back yeah I I'm <laughs> constantly in the state of wanting to go back <laughs> all right Terry Blossom season coming up guys get your tickets <laughs> <laughs> I could talk to you forever but uh, we've already talked beyond our, our an hour so True. we should we should probably wrap this up so you are cat rose and your website okay. is wait a minute make sure i get it right the creative introvert.com and uh if folks want to know more about what you've got going on there uh what's the best way to to reach out and touch yeah cat well rose? it's all there but um i guess twitter is a good way to talk to me um okay. i'm at creative intro Okay, creative intro. Nice. All right. And there's also an, uh, a contact page on this website. That's how I emailed you, right? About yes. cat. There it is. Contact me. See? So there you go. About cat. I do contact enjoy me. emails. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the email address was hello, right? Yeah. Yeah, I creative. love that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a thing? Isn't that what everyone does? I thought that was really unoriginal of me, but okay. I don't know. I, I think that might be the first time I've seen it. I've okay. seen me at. I like that. That one's a good one. <laughs> Maybe I'll change it. Just to, just to confuse everyone. <laughs> Yay. Why not? Well, you know, if, as long um, as it's clickable, people will click. Damn right. There you go. Thanks, Kat. Have well, you- thank you. It's been really fun. All right. I appreciate it. And uh, don't hang up. We, we have to change it. Thanks for taking the time to ride along with us on another episode of Vroom Vroom Veer. For podcast info and show notes, be sure to head over to vvveer.com. That's triple V double E R.com. Man, that's fun to say. And we'll catch up with you next time here on Vroom Vroom Veer. Vroom Vroom Veer.